With the new iBeer, you'll be able to control just about any aspect of what your beer should look, sound, and behave like. All in all, nearly 300 options. Now that is one personalized beer. Let's look at all the elements inside your iBeer so the menu settings will make more sense to you. You've got your foam, you got your beer body, then you got the bubbles, and you got the bubble sound. Now, if you drink a little bit, you'll start to see what we call residue. It's actually that foamy stuff that stays behind on the glass. When you drink a beer, that's what happens. Uh, there is people who uh, really don't like dirty glasses, so we'll show you how to switch that off. All right, so let's empty it. Residue once more, vanishes, and the burp. And here comes your magic button again. Now that is one of the updates. Many people asked us, please let me rebrew beer instantly after I drank it. Well, the original iBeer would close out to your home screen so you could start snapping pictures. We listen to you. Now, when you finish drinking, the beer can start again. That as well is switch offable. All right. Let's uh, look into the menu itself. Let me show you how to get into the menu. Here's your beer. Just long tap it about one or two seconds and as if by magic the menu comes up. Take off that bubble sound. Uh, there's so many people who loved our uh, over exaggerated bubble sound because it's sort of cartoonish like the whole eye beer thing. There's a lot of people also who said beer doesn't sound like that. Well guess what? Make your own beer and just switch off the bubble sound. Some people love those large bubbles. Other people uh, from countries where they like to drink really flat beer or free beer. Free beer usually comes without bubbles. Don't really like the bubbles. Well, guess what? Take away the bubbles. Start it again. Click it. And look at that. It's silent beer without bubbles. Which, of course, makes it a perfect lemonade, or if you're in the uh, medical profession, it could be a urine sample, so you actually already have two additional beverages. And up comes the residue. Now, if you really like clean glasses, this is the magic tool. You'll be able to drink beer from this without ever making your glass dirty. Let's go into the menu and just switch off the dirt. We're all clean now. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? It's a clean glass. Maybe you just don't like red or maybe you don't like that button that allows you to voice activate the beer or use credit cards, which I'll show you in the other tutorial. Why don't we switch off that button? The magic button has a sound as well. You can switch that off too. I'm going to show you why you might not want to do that right now. Done. Look at that. The beer starts instantly. And If you finish the beer, the beer starts rebrewing without showing the button in between. Now, the reason why we left that sound on is if you're pouring, and many people do that, they love that um, eye beer from device to device. If your friend has eye beer as well, it's great to do that. Now, if you can leave away the red button, this looks really realistic. So, your friend basically just has an empty eye beer, waits for the sound. And that is when you, with your other iPhone, can start pouring into his iPod Touch. That's why you still have that sound cue. If you don't need that sound cue because you really know the timing of it, that's fine too. You can just switch off the button sound. Originally, I liked it. The beer fills, you drink it, and goes back to the home screen. I think that's highly humorous, but... Um, if you want to refill, you can do that. If you want to be like me and just go back to the home screen, perfect. Switch it off. Your beer starts, no button, no noises, no bubbles, no sounds. Drink it. Ah, no burp. And it goes back to the home screen. You're ready to snap some pictures of your friends. There's one additional thing that we've built in uh, this version. If you look closely, the very first time you start iBeer, you will see a new loading indicator. 
it shows you how long it takes uh, iBeer to preload. Now, any application, specifically games or uh, intense things like the iBeer, do take about two seconds to actually preload so they're ready for you to run smoothly. Now, with this version, we've decreased uh, the loading time tremendously, but many people would have liked an indicator to see how long it takes them to preload the iBeer. That's what that little wheel is here for. Um, once you're actually in the beer and you restart and rebrew it, it doesn't take any preload time anymore at all. The, the beer comes instantly and instantly. This is really just the first time you start beer. Um, if you don't want that loading indicator, just switch it off. Go into the menu and it's the very top setting. Done. On the topic of loading and memory, uh, there is a lot of people who don't know how to refresh their device. Uh, it does seem to happen that uh, things run a bit jiggity uh, with intense games, uh, hence also at times with eye beer or eye milk. Um, there is a very, very simple way to actually do that. You need to give your device a little break, best maybe once a week, and that is just a device-specific thing. It has nothing to do with the game or the actual eye beer. Many people don't know how this works. It's very simple. Press the top power button until it says slide to power off this one. You just slide it, it powers down, and then you can just start it up again. But that little nap seems to refresh and release a lot of the memory that's just somewhere jumbled up inside the device, and it'll make things run a lot smoother, including the address book or SMS applications, as well as the iBeer. I want to thank you so much for all your YouTube submissions, showing yourself drinking beer or, or eye milk. That's a lot of fun. So we at Hot Tricks decided let's create the Hot Tricks Film Fest. You can win lots of crazy prizes. Uh, and what I've seen on YouTube as well is some weird way uh, how people perceive of drinking from a device. I mean, it is a novel idea to drink from a, a uh, iPod Touch or an iPhone. But the way iBeer was conceived was it should really exactly behave like a glass of beer or actually beer inside a flat vessel like uh, an iPhone or uh, iPod Touch. What that means is drink it like you would be drinking a glass of beer. I see a lot of really fast moving um, um, drinking motions on YouTube and that's not realistic. If you were to really drink that fast the beer would splat in your face. If you were to go down as fast as I see it sometimes on YouTube you'd be spilling all over the bar. So just take your time because that makes it funny too. Take a little sip slow and then let it go back. That way you don't spill. The device thinks it has an opening right here. Okay. Now that goes for shaking as well. If you were to shake like this, and I see a lot of that on YouTube, um, you know, there is a hole here. It's spurt all over. It's not a closed can. It actually is a, uh, a, a vessel that's open here. So shake it like this. You could do that with a uh, glass of beer or milk. So shake it sideways just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. You see how the foam and the froth gets a lot bigger. All right. Let's move on to the next tutorial part where I'll teach you how to voice activate your iPhone and uh, read fingerprints with iBeer.